My voice, like a beacon, called you forth from the woodwork, and together we formed a community, a home away from home. In the beginning, I was so used to not belonging that it never occurred to me that it would be my home, too, that I was building. I never considered that this tribe would be my own. Looking around me, I can see that most of us did not fit in anywhere, but sometimes the people who never fit in fit in perfectly with each other, and just like that we did. I often joke that this tribe is the real vision of the island of misfit toys. I can't speak for you, but I can speak for myself when I say that I have never felt such a sense of belonging anywhere. And even at 2 o'clock a.m., I know you'll be there. Cool. All right, man. Um, we'll start with a nice, simple, easy question. <laughs> what was your childhood like? And what was your trauma exactly? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh... Yeah, it was super isolating, um, super, super isolating. Uh, I felt like I was an alien. I, I, I remember really young and I asked my mom, um, am I adopted? Like, I don't fit in, like, what's going on here? Uh, I remember being like seven and telling her I'm not in control of my life. And of course she tried to reassure me like, oh, you know, I let you pick out your clothes and stuff like that. And I'm like, that's not at all what I'm talking about. <laughs> I um, grew up as a single child with a single mother for most of like um, from the age of three and um, my mom was working a lot and like I have been on my own a lot. My mom and I also moved a lot and so I've like had friends in different places and like my relationship to relationship has eventually became very loose and like I remember every time I would say bye to my dad when I had been with him I would cry so much in the beginning and after a while I became less and less sensitive or less and less an expression of those emotions and stuff and I was rejected pretty immediately by my own family and then by society and I was tried to be cured um, through medication and psychology and it was very damaging to me and I was put on really strong medications from eight years old and up which did not help me understand myself or the world and I was told I was wrong from a really long, young age and that there was, I was unacceptable and there was just things wrong with me um, and it made me really hate myself and hate the world and um, this caused me to really act out and um, hurt myself a lot. Oh, wow. <laughs> I did not know that question. Um, I'd say my childhood was rather challenging. And um, like one choleric parent and one really bipolar, depressed parent. Um, so yeah. I guess both of them with kind of narcissistic tendencies. Um, so I guess my trauma would be around enmeshment. Uh, it's an interesting question. I really don't even want to answer. Um, <laughs> my, I guess the main thing is um, the shame I have and the shame, like the shame around my hand and being made to feel like I'm different and like I'm not worthy and there's just like huge assumption around um, yeah just just a, like deeply ingrained and just this feeling of I'm so much less than everyone else because of that um so I have definitely some abandonment trauma, some neglect trauma, some um, uh, maybe just keeping it there for now. Uh, and then also I have some trauma from the womb. So my mom wasn't sure if she was going to keep me or not. Um, and 
that like when you're in a state of like unsurety about keeping the child or even considering removing the child um, aborting the physical body of the woman can actually release certain like chemicals um, I've been on medication pretty much my whole life just because <laughs> I I didn't want to do my homework <laughs> and uh, and uh, I didn't want to wear the clothes people wanted me to wear and I didn't act like a normal girl so you know I was I was I was labeled as wrong and uh, my family rejected me and they chose to to focus on my other siblings rather than me and I was pretty much like disregarded for a long time uh, I remember my I had a conversation with my mother recently about a year ago and she told me she's like yeah you know you raised yourself and I'm like, and she's saying it is, is a way to be proud of her parenting. And I'm like, that's not really something you should be proud of. Like, that's, that's not good <laughs> in my mind. Yeah. So just the way my mom used me for her own validation, as opposed to seeing me as my own human being. And I was just like, just used for her happiness. So like doing stuff for her under this disguise of like, no, it's good for you to do these exams. It's good for you to learn this instrument and that instrument and singing and all these extra tuitions and private school and all this crap. My traumas, um, basically, uh, emotional neglect, um, you know, not being nurtured in the, in the, <clears throat> in the um, talents that I had. I fucking hate this question because this is too much. This is way too much, okay? <laughs> This is very, very difficult for me because I, my, my problem is that mine, mine don't line up. My, my traumas are hard to explain through my childhood. It sounds a little bit like you're, you have to, you know, kind of look through the lens of my later trauma to see it, um, to see how the patterns were coming out of the childhood. Um, but when I was growing up, I, I was extremely fucking quiet. I had these, you know, the extra century thing going on where I was um, feeling, you know, all these like vibrations and, and connections that were showing me things that other people were not seeing. The brain was not downloading or, you know, perceiving these things. Um, so, yeah, I was very in my head. Needless to say, I was very in my head. Well, I had a 80s kid childhood of being alone all the time. I was a latchkey kid and had a situation with my biological father when I was little where I was separated from my mom for a while when I was real little. So I have, you know, the big old abandonment trauma to deal with. And basically like he was talking about emotional neglect because we are special people with big feelings and we never had anyone around to help us deal with any of that in a healthy way it was always suppression and denial and rejection and anytime we had big things you know inside of us people like ran or just shut us down or whatever my, my parents got separated when i was 11 and i did not feel anything i was completely numb i was like i i never properly like connected to people i never properly you know got you know became like a normal fucking person you know um so i when i was like 14 15 i got even more into the extra sensory stuff i started getting this urge to practice it and create a discipline into it. And just looking back, I mean, I, I knew it didn't sound very normal. Like I knew it wasn't very normal. It's just that it just made so much sense to me that my brain can sense these things. Um, you know, when I would put the, the extrasensory sense in places, like it, sometimes it, I can feel like a magnetic feeling if I put it somewhere in my body I start to feel more of the sensations of my veins I start to feel my organs they start to track my brain starts tracking things and making connections about what's happening in places where you can't see them so my childhood in my perception was there was not emotional intimacy there wasn't 
uh, emotional safety. So my trauma, exactly what I would name, would be emotional neglect. And <clears throat> I do love my parents, and I also have an understanding that they're holding a lot of trauma in their bodies, and they weren't given education for how to deal with that. So the most exact description I would describe was um, also being the one in the family system who was able to see a lot. I guess we'll call it the, the scapegoat, the energetic scapegoat, if you will. Um, yeah. yeah, so there's a lot of gaslighting, a lot of enmeshment, um, a lot of self-abandonment, a lot of coping, um, a lot of fighting and anger. Uh, so my family hoarded cats, and so there's a lot of, um, just a tremendous amount of shame around the, um, the status of our house. And we hid that like really well but it was a very difficult thing. So I was super paranoid anytime I was out in public um, to keep the subject of my house um, off limits kind of thing. And so I was super hyper vigilant about what we were talking about with anybody at any given time. Uh, and of course this made any kind of relationship especially difficult, uh, especially, I mean, close friends. I had a few, but they weren't really they weren't really in touch with what's going on with themselves either. And so it, we kind of just coped together. Uh, it made having a girlfriend be impossible. That's at least what's what I felt like at the time. I turned to um, really bad coping mechanisms. I started self-injuring, cutting and burning myself f from probably 13, 14 and until my 30s. Um, and it's, uh, and I, I abused drugs and alcohol. I became addicted to heroin. Um, I, I got in trouble with the law. I got in fights. And, um, and it got to the point where, where I was just, I was always unhappy. I was always unhappy. I was on a ton of medication. I was on a, the highest level of antidepressants you could give someone, and I was on that for seven years. Um, even after getting off of heroin and I was so unhappy and I was like I can't even everyone's like follow your heart right <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I want I don't know what the fuck my heart is saying I don't even know what I like I uh, basically had no relationships and I uh, hermited myself um, I didn't really <clears throat> go out to seek people um, I didn't socialize. I was just so depressed because of my my perception of the way that you know life should go compared to the way I seen people live around me. It it made it you know made me extremely sad. And I had a lot of neglect and the, and the connection I did have was um, a lot of gaslighting. And nobody in the world really gets that this is uh, traumatizing um, because I grew up in the suburbs and it was, it was more important to look good than to feel good. And uh, and so that was accomplished looking pretty good. Um, but, you know, just a total lack of uh, awareness of the importance of emotions and um, child development, what it takes to raise a healthy human being. Okay, so I'm thinking, is there anything else you'd want to talk about or mention that you think would be good? Yeah, actually, uh, I'm glad you asked. Um, I had been thinking a lot about why Teal specifically is so polarizing because um, it's you have like extreme levels of um, like resistance and hate towards her, and then you have extreme levels of like adoration and um, I don't want to use the word worship, but it's like some people do really. Um, I mean, it almost is a form of worship, you know, and like I understand it. Um, so what I keep thinking about is with her capacity to see people so clearly and absolutely see where they're at. Um, that's a very jarring experience. And so some people, if they don't want to be seen to that level, they're going to polarize with that and make her an enemy. Um, if they're showing her things they, about themselves that they don't want to see, 
they're going to come against her and blame her for those things being there or for them feeling those things. To understand the reason that people react to me the way they do, you have to study the way a human behaves in front of a mirror. People become massively polarized. Most all people who step in front of a mirror do not see all of themselves in it, especially not anything more than their appearances. They have spent their time trying desperately to change themselves to be whatever they believe is good. So when they step in front of a mirror, they instantly focus and fixate on what they dislike the most about themselves. Other people may have been telling themselves that they are hideous and have resigned to that fate, in which case, stepping in front of the mirror, they are more likely to be surprised that they are in fact not hideous. They will see their own beauty for the first time. And so, people who come across Teal Swan, my embodiment, will also react in this way. Just like when you step in front of a mirror, you will see the thing you are pushing away the most within yourself. This could be what you judge as your beauty or your ugliness. You will see whatever brings you closer to the current reality of yourself. You will see whatever needs to be integrated into your awareness, so that you can become more unified within yourself and more grounded in reality. If you were shamed as a child for any selfish behavior to the degree that you polarized by identifying with being a helper or selfless, most likely you will see me as a self-centered egomaniac. If you could not cope in this way by changing yourself to please those who shamed you for your self-centeredness and continued to be ashamed of being selfish so that selfish became your identity, you don't see yourself clearly either. By stepping in front of the mirror, you will see your own selflessness. You will most likely see me as a person who is endlessly giving to others and whose team posts images of me all day long against my will because it's just the reality of social media. If you suppress, reject, and deny your sexuality, you will see me as someone who flaunts my sexuality. It will bother you immensely. If you suppress, reject, and deny your significance, you will see my significance and idolize me for it. If you want to understand the reaction that anyone has to me, just imagine them in front of a mirror. Those people who dedicate their lives to hating me are those who hate themselves the most, but who are currently denying the fact that they hate themselves. They were, the film crew was there when I was doing my training too, and yeah. they interviewed every single one of us before they filmed. Um, and before the training actually started and they're asking me some questions and they asked me like you know what do you think about the other um, I don't know what the word they use but I mean hit pieces against Teal and I'm like oh I've, I've seen a couple of them you know to me it seemed more like sensationalism than anything and I very clearly recall when I said that mm. the director was visibly discomforted like he I can tell he, he felt like triggered in a way when I said that and so I, I thought that was kind of fishy that he mm. would feel that. Uh, I wish there was more like wholesome moments because I know there was some there. Like, I don't know. I think it's, it's almost kind of funny because there is a lot of really bad editing in it. And because I have a much more, more um, in touch, uh, I guess, exposure to her and her material already, it just, it seemed funny to me. It's just like, they spent this much time and this much money making this. Like, mm. I don't know. I can I can understand though if you have no because I have a friend that I just met recently and she said that she saw the first episode and she's really not a fan of Teal now because of that. I don't know if it's gonna change. And I told her I was like, yeah, that's one perspective and it is media, you know. So uh, hopefully, if she can use her own discernment and eventually go through and see both sides of things, um, mm. she can come to a more objective conclusion. But yeah, I mean, I, I see the positive of it too, because it's galvanizing a lot of people. Mm. Like, I think the intention of you creating this might be because of the backlash from Deep End. You know, yeah, well, like I other... do it otherwise. I've got shit to do, man. <laughs> 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 just, every day I'm like, bro, are you sure you wouldn't do this? You've got this to do, you've got that to do. And I'm like, well, no one else is do you know but <laughs> like, i apply for a visa i'm gonna focus on my work I, like there's a dating life i want to focus on but i'm like fuck it just do it <laughs> but, <laughs> well man i commend you i really appreciate you taking the lead on this man thanks bro i really appreciate it i love it. it yeah yeah absolutely man um, um cool bro and do you have a i'm just thinking of this on the fly do you have a message for john the director of the deep end documentary and the way they Ooh. twisted things yeah she's like what the fuck man like really <laughs> like this is what you're gonna do 
Uh, I mean, that's low, man. Like, if he's going to spend that much time with him, it, like, in an intimate setting and bond with him and, like, just hang out with them without cameras too, to like really build up their trust. Like, man, that's, I, that just feels so low. Like I, I don't, it's hard for me to understand them to be honest, John. Like if, if I was talking to you directly, it'd be like, I don't understand. I, I want to understand like, what's your intention? Like what, what were you hoping for? You know what I mean? Like, what are you trying to achieve through this? And like, do you have a conscious like conscience? Like, does this not bother you at all? Like, don't you know how disingenuous and dishonest this work has been? Like, does that not bug you at all? Um, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like, ugh, like it's, it's cringy. It's dirty. It feels like just so manipulative, you know? And yeah, release the footage. <laughs> That's all I can say. Absolve yourself, release the footage. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the Deep End documentary? Um, so it's, it's kind of interesting. I feel like I'm the only one who's going to have this perspective. I don't know, but one of the biggest things I felt is a sense of relief because they showed all they showed really was just Teal. One of the biggest things they've shown is like Teal being able to show anger and set boundaries and be like firm. And to me, that's like a huge relief because all the, in the videos and everything she releases she's like just giving stuff away for free all the time being really nice being really kind like just helping and i guess this unconscious worry of mine was like oh she's just like really soft really kind and people like that can be taken advantage of and then when you're in like a celebrity position on top of that being a teacher and a, like a guru uh, i don't mean that word in negative i mean in a good way like being a teacher people learn from and also being someone who she's the best at helping people with their deepest pain then you're basically like in the middle and just being like you know just like yanked by everyone all the time and you know so for me to be able to see that even though it's out of context blah 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 it was like there was like a relief of like, okay, she's a bit of a badass. That's cool. Or I like that. I, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a relief. Okay, so she can kind of like protect herself. You know? um, but overall, it's, you know, the documentary is just like, it's not real. It's, it's like criminal, you know, the, the way they've edited things to make a fake narrative to show things that didn't happen to make her look bad and for like scandal it's just weird and the way they went about doing it is like disgusting and it's it hurts her which is bad enough like hurting the person is bad enough it hurts her team which is like even more people then it hurts all the people who are like suicidal like i've been suicidal and like used her video paid her nothing yeah not that i could have <laughs> right I was suicidal but i paid her nothing to like be able to come out of it and like use what she teached right the amount of anxiety the shame i've had the fear all these different things constantly coming up and that's just me and you know times that by you know fuck knows how many people like probably tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of people like doing her work and to hurt them and to steer people away from being healed who deserve to be healed like anyone who does that for the sake of views or money or whatever it is, is not a good person. And I'm speaking from a perspective of being a man, like as a man, you have certain like duties and like responsibilities and like honor, integrity, things like that. And this guy has none of that. He's like mm. the complete opposite. He's, he's disgusting. Thanks for sharing. As you're saying that, I'm feeling like anger and <laughs> like boil up in me too. Like I can yeah. see it like it needs accountability. Um, so, I mean, this is along the same lines. This is taking it a step further. If you were to talk to him directly, would you have a message for John, the director of the documentary? A weasel like you isn't going to outshine Teal herself. You're not, you're not going to win with Teal, a team, a group, all of us. You're not going to win against us. You, you and your pathetic need for whatever it is you need 
isn't gonna win against our desire for truth, honesty, healing, love, togetherness, oneness, caring about each other, like being honest and genuine and like actually working on ourselves and doing the work, like being real. You're not gonna win against that. You had your little moment, sure. You you duped so many people. Well done. Like there are many idiots who are like, oh yeah, like who followers of Teal who got duped into like thinking these whatever he wanted them to think. But you're not gonna win in the long run. Like just know that. You will never you will not win. Like and this is this is how you've branded yourself now, forever, as someone who did this. You're weird. What is there more to say? I'm deeply troubled by all of this. I'm troubled by the casual and complex misrepresentations and distortions that are no different from lies presented as the truth. I'm troubled by what they were willing to do with people's lives for whatever gain they imagined or expected. And I'm super glad that was the last episode and I can now get back to my true work. But please know this. Too many times in the past, I have tried to take the high road and I did virtually nothing about this sort of thing. I realize now this was a major mistake. In fact, it encouraged people who intended to harm me and my work to think that they can harm me without any response on my behalf to defend myself my family, my company, and the people who follow my content. And this is ending now. And again, I call on the filmmakers to hashtag release the footage so that everyone can see the actual truth. Have a good week. I had struggled with a lot of coping mechanisms and addictive behavior since a very young age. Um, self-esteem, just a lot of different patterns, food, and um, constantly feeling like an igloo, like I'm in this igloo and the, and the world is outside of me. Um, and when I came across her teachings, it was kind of like this, like things just kind of blew open in a different way. What's changed is the way I approach life is this from a more aware perspective and there's like long term with like a long term perspective and also I have the tools which actually work to get what I want. Much more clear on who I am and what my value is. Um, I have a lot more awareness around the dysfunction of my family dynamics. I knew there was a lot going on there, but I have much more precise language to kind of identify what was happening and why it was happening. I have reprogrammed my mind based on the, the, the freeing concepts and the emotional awareness that, that Teal teaches. Yeah, my life after Teal's teachings, after, you know, using parts work and all that, I found myself more less confused that's how i would say that i found myself less confused with with her videos that she posts i was able to get off of prescription medication um they told me i would i have a reoccurring depressive major depressive disorder and i'd never be able to get off medication well i've been off of it um now for about four years i feel so much more empowered i feel more at home and at peace with who I am, with where I am, and also in recognition of where I can get to. And if you do that with many things, you just become a lot less triggered in life in general and a lot more stable and calm and less really, really how she describes it also. It really is so true in my experience, really less fragmented. I guess I feel more um, confident about the fact that I can live a good life, even though I've come from a lot of pain. And that's just because of that. Be the positive change, you know? It, it doesn't take much to start it. Um, and once the momentum's going, it's, it's like a domino effect. Yes, the processes that yeah. she offers and the way that she articulates mm -hmm. how to do things and why is 
unlike any other spiritual teacher that I've encountered in this lifetime, she has been able to like open me up to free myself of that mental slavery. So many of the actions that I've taken, I don't believe I would have had the courage, awareness, or belief to take them um, to, to get to where I am. My relationships have gotten a lot better. I'm being really honest with people instead of being strategic with them. I'm being kinder and softer in this world to myself and to others. Um, I'm able to really experience life and figure out what I want to do. Um, I'm not, I don't feel stuck and I don't feel trapped and I don't feel, I don't feel just totally depressed all the time. I wouldn't say it's, it's, um, it's more easy <laughs> because I think it's the hardest work to do to face yourself. Using Teal's work, it was particularly the, the parts work. Um, I did it with a, a practitioner and I will say to anybody watching this, you know, do it with the fucking practitioner, okay? This is, this is that's how you do it. <laughs> it's a process that I created to overcome traumas. So exactly what you're describing to me, where you say, I have had all these experiences and it's created all of this way of coping with things and way of thinking and it's like I'm getting flooded. So what this process does is it takes you inside the trigger in order to resolve what was unresolved. And it basically brings the, you know, your whole being back into a state of integration. It puts all those pieces back together again and shows you what the healing is. I want you to do a completion process when you get triggered. So completion process is best used when you least want to use it. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> when you're feeling that rush of emotions and the sensations that are intense is when that wormhole is really open to whatever trauma you experienced. I need you to get in the habit of chasing that down. I have a book that basically shows you the entire process if you want to do it yourself, right? Okay. But I also have a bunch of practitioners. I'm curious about your experience as a practitioner. So let's start with this. Like, you've worked with quite a few clients. How have you seen this work actually impact your clients? Um, so I'm actually seeing a lot of that recently. I'm seeing clients that I've been seeing for three years now come back to me, like on video cam or whatever, and it's like they're a completely different person. I'm watching their energy field and the person that used to come on like a little bit maybe mousy, a little bit maybe shy and unconfident feels just like, oh my God, like I'm actually moving forward in my life right now and I, I feel confident right now. I have seen pretty incredible things. I have seen sessions that we had and then within the time could vary, but within a week to a couple of weeks, really big uh, shifts happen for them in relationships and job situations, um, as well as like a stronger ability to be aware of their inner voice, be aware of feelings and needs. This work helps them so much to literally get a fresh breath of air and be able to move forward in their life and make the right decisions. And I've seen people do the healing work to come out of the worst PTSD, the worst kind of trauma. Peace and waves is the way that I'll, I'll answer that, as well as a lot of sh shifts and changes in the physical. People who really don't follow Teal's work much at all are just completely done with life hurting them, done with life getting in their way, and they're willing to try anything. And they come to you because they heard about completion process for someone, and they're like, listen, I've tried everything, nothing works. I'm drowning over here, please help me. And it's like, the second you start working with them and you start showing them what you have to offer in this kind of work, they're immediately like, I actually feel hope for the first, like I'm a 40 year old woman and I actually feel hope for the first time in like my entire life. Like, you know, and it's like, they can feel what this work is gonna do for them. And I set them up for, okay, wait, we can actually like tackle these tough things in your life that you haven't been able to deal with, that you haven't been able to cope with. And I actually can be your support on creating a different life. And 
the the main thing that I, I really want people to get is that when you start doing this work, it's actually not just about what happens in that session with the facilitator. You're setting yourself up to re-own your free will, re-own your choice, and from there you create a completely different life for yourself. You make different choices. You you make a completely different life for yourself based on the healing that happens in these sessions. What needs are you meeting for your clients? Permission, presence, containment, space, understood, unconditional understanding. Um, you know, like I, I truly don't feel that there's anything that I would be like so taken aback by. Mm. Um, and I feel that that unconditional understanding is really meets a big need and support um, feeling supported feeling I've had clients express to me that you know they have tried therapy and because there's almost like a cold you know I guess we could say that the coldness to it that they feel that they were only really able to feel helped through the work that we've done because there is that more connected experience. It, it's shocking, honestly, when you, really, when you really become that first responder and you're answering people's call for help and you're getting people and you're like, wow, you have no one to talk to about this. You have nobody that you can actually trust or as a safe human being to talk to you about this. And yeah, that's, it, it's really, yeah, it's shocking when you get into it. Yeah. And I mean, I'm curious, like, what, how does that make you feel? What are your thoughts on that? I feel closer to humanity because these people are letting me into their lives and they're creating, like, I am a safe person and they're showing up needing that safe person. And so it's like, you're connecting with these people and I feel closer to humanity when these people let me into their lives to help them. I can round, uh, round it all up with saying that I love the way that she uh, is so powerfully in her integrity and shows um, a, female, um, a female leadership in a way that's really amazing and inspiring for me as a woman. Uh, um, I think that Teal's work just touches people on a human level and it understands the human problem. and. I just, I guess what I really want to say is that if there's a fastest swimmer on earth, teal, teal, teal swimming. <laughs> and I, and I, and I truly, I truly believe that she knows how to swim the fastest and, and that's not a bad thing that she yeah. knows what she's doing because we, we need someone who does. I really want to say thank you, Teal, from the bottom of my heart, working with all the parts in the work that seem to be so unworkable and for not giving up upon us. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I would love to just say thank you so much for being the forerunners for doing this work. Um, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, Teal, for creating the completion process. It's changed my life, it's changing everybody wor I work with life and it's because of you that this exists that something this crazy and amazing and impactful exists in the first place and I know that you guys are spending every breath that you have in every moment of your life trying to get this work out there to more people and I can appreciate that as a human being. I hope that um, that these videos uh, where we talk about how she's been helping us will um, be of clarity for people who aren't so familiar with her content. I represent all of us. I represent the tribe. And like a tidal wave, I felt you lift beneath me and carry me to the stage. 
I want you to know that this will be the final thought I have before every performance I give for the rest of my life. And I am proud to represent us. Love always. Your teal. <laughs>